All right, guys, we're going to talk about lab equipment today. Um, make sure that you watch this video all the way through. Big goal, we want to be able to identify the name of the tool, the use of the tool, and um, make sure you can spell it right. That'd be nice too. Okay. But anyway, just to jump right in, the big goal here is we want to know the right tool for the job. That we do. So first, beakers. Okay? Beakers are used for holding okay, various chemicals. They're not for measuring things, okay. Um, you'll notice on the side of this beaker, I know it's kind of hard to see. Um, uh, let's down here. You can see behind, um, right there, it says plus or minus 5%. So if you put 100 milliliters in here, you might have 105 milliliters, you might have 95 milliliters, you don't know. Um, so beakers are not used for accurately measuring things. They're used for holding various chemicals. You can use them to stir, to mix, that kind of stuff, okay? To heat, uh, but not for measuring. Graduated cylinder, on the other hand, is what we use to measure volume, okay? Um, many of our graduated cylinders have these plastic tops. I have extra if you get one that doesn't. Plastic tops are very important, okay? Number one, it should be above the uh, tick marks. There is an open like, gap in, in this collar it should be lined up with that uh, beaker lip there. Um, but anyway, this collar has two purposes. Number one, if you're pouring stuff in there and you spill a little bit, it will catch it. Um, and number two, if it was to fall, right, so it leans over and falls, instead of landing on the glass and breaking our graduate cylinder, it lands on the plastic collar, keeps it safe, okay? It should not look like this. I don't know why this looks like a good idea, but it's not. Um, it should be up here near the top. Beware, these come off, okay? Uh, make sure that it's not just barely sitting in there or that when you're holding it that it's crooked, okay? Make sure that you can read the tick marks in this gap and make sure it is seated, right? So you, you know, just give a little tap and you'll hear it, okay? Always read um, from the meniscus, which is the middle part. Uh, depending on the liquid, the meniscus might be uh, at the bottom, right? Like a like water has a meniscus at the bottom. Um, or, you know, if it's something like mercury, the meniscus is actually at the top. It, it, it piles up. So always read it right in the middle um, and you'll get a good reading. Erlenmeyer flasks are good for holding volumes. They're just like beakers. They're not good for measuring. They'll give you an approximate number, but that's not a good measurement. Um, they are useful for mixing things, though, by swirling. So you hold the top and just kind of spin them um, in your hand and that will swirl things. So good for mixing. A Florence flask uh, is also called a round bottom flask. Okay, that's, that's another name for the Florence uh, flask. It's good for boiling, okay, and sometimes we'll use it in organic chemistry to uh, collect gas, but the main thing we'll use it for is boiling. Uh, a volumetric flask is, it looks like a boiling flask, but, um, or a Florence flask, sorry, but you can see right here there's this line that is an extremely accurate line. A volumetric flask only measures one volume, though. So, like, this measures any volume from, you know, five all the way to 100 milliliters. A volumetric flask, in this case, that one only measures exactly 50 milliliters. So, um, good for measuring out 50 milliliter aliquots, which is a specific volume, an, an aliquot, uh, but not good for taking, like, measurements for an experiment when you don't know exactly how much you're going to have. Um, a reagent bottle is just a bottle that will have some label on it that says, hey, you know, there's something in here, like hydrochloric acid or whatever. Um, we just use it to store stuff. It usually has a glass top there uh, that is um, sealable. All right, we'll put paraffin on it. These are called rubber stoppers. They come in two, um, two types. There's the ones with holes and the ones without. If you want to seal something in, make sure you pick up one that doesn't have a hole. Uh, if you're going to run a thermometer through it and then stick it down in the beaker, make sure it has a hole in it, okay? Um, test tubes, pretty standard. The test tube rack holds the test tubes. Um, remember, test tubes are not for measuring. They're just for doing your experiment. You can use them to waft chemicals, right? Um, anytime you heat them, make sure they're pointed away from all faces. There should be an angle. So if I'm heating, I never heat directly from the bottom. I always want to have it tilted to one side. Um, make sure you label your test tubes in the test tube rack. 
Um, if once you wash them, you can flip them upside down and put them on top of these little sticks and that will help them dry. Um, a distillation flask, not something that we'll use this year, um, but you can use it to separate liquids based on their boiling uh, points. That's what it means to distill something. It's separating a liquid based on its boiling point. Uh, we do use burettes. That's this really big, tall uh, piece of glassware. And the burette clamp, which comes in both the single and the double version. Um, these are also really good for measuring out a certain amount of liquid. So if you're like, I want to give exactly, you know, five milliliters, um, you can measure that very accurately. But again, this graduate cylinder is what we use to measure volume. Okay. Um, the ring stand is uh, what we attach clamps to in order to set up experiments. It will, you know, hold pieces of glassware in place for heating. Um, if you need to evaporate something, if you need to distill something. Pretty much every experiment starts by setting up a ring stand with a ring clamp. When you're cleaning your test tubes, use the test tube brushes. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes for the different sizes of test tubes. Don't force them, okay? Uh, you also use test tube brushes to clean graduate cylinders, and there's burette brushes uh, for cleaning burettes. They're you know, that long. A test tube holder is used for carrying test tubes, nothing else. Uh, it's also used if you're holding the test tube over a flame to heat it, uh, to keep your hands from getting burnt. Um, we have plenty of thermometers. Uh, they're all in Celsius, so make sure you're recording them as metric temperatures, okay? Um, but a thermometer does measure the temperature of an object. We have hot plates. They don't look exactly like this, but they do have a white top and knobs on the front. We use them to heat things. They're hot. Don't touch them. Assume they're hot. All right, this is a Bunsen burner. Um, it shoots a big blue flame out of the top. It plugs into the gas that we have in the lab. Um, be careful with them because, you know, they're an open flame. So make sure your hair, hair is pulled back. Make sure, um, you know, you have loose clothing bound up and out of the way. Rubber tubing is used most often to connect a Bunsen burner to the gas valve. Um, so that's what we'll use it for. But it can also be used to move water from, you know, point A to point B, and it can be used in vacuum filtration, which we'll talk about later. Um, wire gauze is uh, a piece of mesh, like wire, and it's got this uh, like plaster white circle in the middle. If you heat something, then you uh, want to, you know, take it off the heat, put it on the desk. Don't put it directly on the desk, okay? It will... Um, it might shatter, it doesn't always, but it might shatter, right? Because you have the really hot glass and the really cold desk. So you sit on this wire gauze and it kind of acts like a hot plate. If you're um, heating with a Bunsen burner you, and, and you want to disperse the heat of the flame, you can actually have your Bunsen burner, then your wire gauze, and then whatever it is you're heating, and the flame will heat the wire up and it will um, absorb and spread the flame's heat around. A clay triangle is used to hold up a crucible. This is a crucible. It fits right down inside the clay triangle. Um, that clay triangle sits on the ring and, you know, it, it um, suspends the crucible in order to heat it, okay? Um, crucibles are made of porcelain. They break and crack very easily, so be careful with them. Uh, we use them to heat things to very, very high temperatures to dehydrate them um, in one of our labs. These are crucible tongs. They should only be used with the crucibles. Um, and we will demo how to use those in class. You also have beaker tongs. These are rubberized beaker tongs. So that black stuff there is rubber um, wrapped around the metal. They can be used to pick up hot beakers to carry them off of a hot plate or something like that. And you don't obviously really touch them with your hands. Mortar and pestles are used to grind up uh, large um, crystals into a powder. Uh, we don't have to use them very often. Usually I will use them to prep something, um, but that is what they're used for. And you will see them back there in the lab. Now, this is called a scoopula. Most of ours are missing the wooden handles, so they just look like metal scoops. Um, you use them to get chemicals out of containers uh, into, um, into a way boat. Everybody in their lab desk have um, stirring rods. They're glass stirring rods. You use them to stir things. So, you know, good name for them. Um, this is a striker. Don't sit there and, and do this number and, you know, make the annoying little noise. It, it wears the flint out. 
All right, but I will show you guys how to light a bunch of burner with um, with a striker. Okay, this is called a watch glass. There are these little bolts. You don't. This is them drying. You actually use them flipped up the other way usually, um, and they uh, are a great way to just do a small chemical reaction and you watch it. You can also put things in there and have them evaporate, um, but they are called watch glasses. This is called an evaporating dish. If you have a lot of liquid you need to evaporate, you use this just because it's deeper than the watch glass. Um, we don't really use them for anything else. A uh, centrifuge, not something that we use in chemistry, but a common lab um, tool. Um, you just use to separate suspensions. We will talk about them and look at them, but we won't actually use one in the lab. Um, meter sticks, we use to measure distance, right? We use to measure length. Um, we'll talk about the conversions, but remember that one meter is 100 centimeters, 1,000 millimeters, or 10 decimeters. They're all the, those are interconvertible. Um, funnels are used to transfer things from one uh, object, usually into a narrower, op narrower object. So we have glass and plastic funnels. Um, I usually use the plastic funnels for solids because they have a slightly larger opening. Uh, and the glass funnels for moving liquids around. Uh, droppers and bottles are just used to, you know, put out one drop at a time for small experiments. Wash bottle, which we will use a lot, um, has DI water in it, deionized water, um, and it's really good for rinsing stuff out. If you see this DH2O, that means deionized or distilled water. Okay, so it's water that doesn't have anything in it. Um, and is not going to contaminate your experiment. Um, we will always wear goggles in the lab. Um, I do have aprons with the COVID um, concerns going on. If you use an apron, we will decontaminate it at the end of class. Um, all of the safety goggles are decontaminated after every use with a UV light. Okay, so um, they will be decontaminated as we use them, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, Inoculating loops or flame loops are something that we really use more in biology, but we can use them for flame tests, um, but we will actually use what's called a wooden splint instead. But you can use an inoculating loop for a flame test. Uh, we will use digital balances a lot. They will be what we use to measure mass. Okay, about 200 grams is the limit in our labs, uh, but they can go further than that. Back in the day, we used to use triple beam balances. We don't even, I don't even think we have one of these um, anymore. We usually use uh, the digital ones instead. But if you did use a triple beam balance or a double pan balance, um, you would have to make sure that they are correctly calibrated. This is triple beam. It's used to measure um, masses. Double pans are used to compare masses, okay? Um, there's also a centigram balance, which is, very, very small measurement, okay, for very small things. It's very, very precise. We do have a couple of these, um, but it's very uncommon to use one. Um, pipettes and pipette bulbs and hand pumps are things that we use to just transfer liquids around. Uh, you probably use those in biology. The barrel pipettes are disposable pipettes. These are the ones that we'll use the most, okay. Um, they say on the side that they're one milliliters, um, or sometimes 10 milliliters, I wouldn't trust them. Use your graduated cylinder to measure volumes. Um, use pipettes to transfer liquids, okay? Uh, capillary tubes, uh, we will probably demo. I don't know that we'll actually need to use them. Excuse me. Yeah. Oof. But um, a capillary tube has an extremely small opening and capillary action will pull liquid up into it. You can use it to um, get a sample for the melting station, right, which is what we would use it for uh, if we get there this year. All right, those are the main tools that we use in chem. So make sure you have an idea of what each one is used for, um, what not to use it for, that's the big one. Um, definitely make sure you know what tool to use for length, for mass, and for volume, okay? So those are the big three that we want to nail down. All right, if you have any questions, shoot me an email.